Are gold and silver now a sure thing? I think they are, and I'll tell you why. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Yankee Stacking. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell, you know the drill. You know, I sometimes mention that many younger investors haven't been around for a serious bear market or a recession. You know, the impact of COVID on the stock market was not just epic, but it was epically short thanks to the orgy of currency printing by the Fed. And I think more of that is coming soon. Many millennials and, and pretty much all the Gen Zs haven't really seen a bear market in equities yet. For real. And they haven't been around long enough to see a real gold and silver bull market either. Frankly, they largely don't even know gold and silver exist. They're too interested in playing with penny stocks in their Robinhood accounts or you know, uh, reading Wall Street bets on Reddit. Most couldn't care less about this stuff, precious metals. And I know the recent silver buzz might have educated some. I'm really hopeful it has. You know, maybe we'll see an awakening around precious metals soon. But most are just clueless about gold and silver. And I'm not being a boomer here, okay? I'm just stating the facts. Gold and silver are unknown and they're unloved. Facts. What's also a fact is that over the last five years, gold has quietly gone from around a thousand bucks an ounce to 1800 plus. Silver has almost doubled. So in other words, unknown, unloved, but going up. Let's take a minute and talk about bonds. Bonds aren't as sexy as stonks, all right? But I think they're even more important and more at risk than the stock market. And hang in with me here, okay? Don't click out of this video. You need to hear this. I'll, I'll try to make it very clear. I'll try to make it short, but this is really important. Let's start with this. Did you know that the U.S. 10-year treasury has been on a bull market run for over 38 years? The U.S. Treasury bond bottomed out back in uh, 1982. That was when interest rates peaked at over 15%. I remember this time, okay? I, I'm old, I, I get it. <laughs> Can you imagine if we had 15% interest rates right now? Can you imagine getting that kind of return on the money you put in the bank? 15% interest, but the bonds were at the very bottom. Now, that same interest rate is about 1.2%, not 15. That means that the interest yield on the U.S. 10-year Treasury has fallen by 92% in over 38 years. 92%. Today, the interest on the 10-year bond is actually less than inflation, or at least as it's calculated by the Consumer Price Index, the CPI less than inflation. In, in other words, if you give the government your hard-earned money for 10 years, 10 years, they promise you that they will give you back less than what you gave them. Nice deal, huh? Forget sexy. That is but ugly, folks. That's what gold and silver are up against. And in my opinion, that's not a fair fight. See, gold traditionally trades the opposite uh, to the bond market, okay? So when, so when bonds are doing poorly, gold does well. And of course, you know, when the bonds are doing well, gold does poorly. That's usually how it goes. I think the bond market, though, is in for a crash of epic proportions. I'm guessing that that crash is going to happen in this decade. Now, some people subscribe to this... Uh, uh, a theory called the milkshake theory. I don't know if you've heard of it before. It's um, espoused by a guy named Brent Johnson, sharp guy. He says that both precious metals and the U.S. dollar are headed higher 
in the short to midterm. Both of them going up at the same time. I don't think he's right. I think the dollar is going to go down much faster over the next five years. In fact, I think the dollar index, the uh, DXY is at 91, I think today. This is Saturday, I'm recording this. 91. It broke below 72 during the global financial crisis. I say that that low, 72, is going to be taken out. And I think it's going to be taken out soon. See, faith in the U.S. dollar, which is currently the world's reserve currency. You know this, right? That faith is going to be lost. And when that loss of faith in the uh, purchasing power of the capital in U.S. 10-year treasuries happens, silver and gold win big. Okay, so as, as far as uh, the U.S. 10-year treasury, the dollar is a guaranteed loser. Guaranteed. Think about that. It's a guaranteed loser. And I contend that that makes gold and silver guaranteed winners eventually. So anyways, that's the, the reward side of the equation. Let's look at the other side, the risk side, okay? And it's pretty obvious what that is, guys. It's the debt All right, at every level federal, state, uh, local, corporate, personal debt. People, our debt should keep us up at night. Gold and silver's competition, all right? The, what this is up against, guys, is a $27 trillion federal debt on its balance sheet. That doesn't even count the almost $160 trillion dollars in what's called unfunded liabilities or off balance sheet debt okay the debt that you don't you know see straight up in other words empty promises our government made to you and me republican and democrat governments by the way doesn't matter right i'm 54 years old i am getting ready to retire all right at least i i hope i can Yankee is about to become an off-balance sheet liability. What, is that? what do I mean by that? I'm about to get Social Security, Medicare, all the stuff promised me from a broke federal government. How are they going to do that? How are they going to deal with the stuff that they've promised? Well, let's, let's think about this. Taxes, sure. I mean, they're going to go up soon enough. But we take in trillions less in taxes than we actually spend every year. So that's not going to work well. They could cut entitlements, right? Or renege just on their promises. I can see that happening. They're going to move the goalpost. You know, at some point, shoot, they'll dismantle the goalposts at some point. That's coming. Maybe I won't get Social Security. Who knows, right? But the easiest thing and the most economically dishonest and immoral thing that they can do is print all the currency they want. But whatever we do, we're never, ever going to pay off our national debt. It's unserviceable, folks. Which is horrible for our future standard of living, terrible for my three children, but it's fantastic for gold and silver. You see, we're in an economic box and there are only two ways out of this box. We can either inflate away the current value of our debt by devaluing the dollar and actually revaluing gold and silver at the same time, or we can default. We can declare bankruptcy. Shoot, we're already bankrupt, but we could declare it formally. That's it. Those two options. The first option that I mentioned is the hyperinflationary end game. The second is the dollar reset you've probably heard of. Both of those options would cause instability and complete lack of faith in our system, which is, again, terrible for our American way of life. Incredibly good for gold and silver.
So, there it is, guys. Opportunity and risk. Is gold and silver now a sure thing? <laughs> I think they've been a sure thing for a while. Don't wait until everybody figures this out. You need to stack physical silver and gold right now. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope your day is a-okay.